Hi, I was talking to one of my viewers, Full Metal State, and he was commenting on how he was going to start a campaign, apparently, with people that are new to the role-playing game hobby. So he wanted to know my thoughts on how to prepare for a campaign. Well, I'm going to give you uh, some tips. They are not exactly exhaustive, but I do consider them quite important, perhaps essential, because sometimes we need to have a clear understanding, not only about the scope of the campaign, but also the limitations. These do not come in a particular order. They are not steps. They are just considerations, just considerations for you to to apply or ponder on or, or think about when creating your campaign. Well, first things first, you need to choose a system that everyone will enjoy using. Even if one or two players at your table, if they are not very excited or, or comfortable with a particular system, the campaign is at risk. So you need to identify what sorts of games your players enjoy. I think this applies to many things, like for example, board games as well. I have played with people that you play a, a board game with a very simple system or even a role-playing game and they end up a bit bored if it's a mechanic that is solved with a single roll of the die or something like that or diceless they they are simply not stimulated with those complex or deep rules but then you uh, put them to play so let's say that you wanted them to play um, the typical hack system you know like the black hack or white hack or whatever those are very simple systems and they simply do, cannot get into the game they don't feel that excitement they don't experience fun but if they are people like i said that they enjoy very complex systems maybe they you play hackmaster or legend quest any of those systems perhaps something a bit in the middle like the 2d20 system and they actually enjoy that a lot more because they feel like there are so many options. They enjoy that variety, that depth, that ability to choose what they want to do with the results of the dice. Not only based on the descriptions of the character's actions, but also the effects from those decisions, from those choices, from those interpretations, etc. So... I think that's a priority. Definitely choose a system that your players will enjoy. And the next thing to consider, like I said, in no particular order, but for the sake of uh, structure, I'm going to handle them like this. You must think about the campaign length. You need to be flexible about this. Oftentimes, campaigns are much shorter than expected. If you are running a module that you have purchased one of those big campaigns or perhaps a mega dungeon and such, just get into the idea that perhaps your group will not finish that campaign or that mega dungeon or those chain scenarios, whatever. If you try to force the campaign to happen to the expected length, there's going to be too much tension on your part. The players are also going to feel that tension it's all about keeping things somewhat relaxed or tranquil. People usually tend to, how would you say, rebel or go against compromise. If you want to something to go down the drain and there is nothing involved, like for example, money, because many projects, for example, at work, any sort of lucrative project, they actually end up developing throughout one, two, or even more years, because there is a certain mo monetary reward. There, there is a reward for that. But in the case of tabletop role-playing games, yes, the reward is quite uh, fulfilling. You want to experience those stories that result from the interactions of the player characters with the game world. You want to enjoy yourself. You want to have fun. You want to actually role-play. You also want to play a game successfully. All of that, that's enjoyment, but there is really not a, a, a more tangible reason, 
as to why you should keep on playing that campaign for one year, two years or more, or several months, it all depends. Like I said, on like in, in work, where, where you are working, because you need money to survive, you need money for food, for medicine or whatever, or for comforts, all of that. So you don't have that reward in tabletop role-playing games. It's some more emotional, perhaps some would say spiritual reward. It's, it's intangible, it's abstract, it's, it's an enjoyment. If you want to consider things in, in a more uh, materialistic level, you could say that you enjoy that, uh, those chemical changes in your body when you play role-playing games. So people are usually not ready to commit to long campaigns. So it's much better to communicate with your, player, with your players that you want to enjoy a, a fun session or two. There are no strings attached. They are not obligated or forced to play a, a particular number of scenarios. If you do that, I think things will proceed for a longer time. Some players could have a different opinion. Maybe they want to establish a very strict contract that you, if you compromise yourself to, to this campaign, you're going to play at least six adventures or something. But it's going to feel like some sort of duty or job. It's going to feel like you are working. And you don't want that. You want something completely different. Something for your enjoyment. You can still put effort. You can work towards something. But <laughs> it seems like a paradox. You work towards something, but it doesn't feel like work. It feels like just enjoyment. So make sure that the players know that there is no obligation to keep on playing the campaign and you need to make that, cert that clear for yourself as well. That way you won't feel disappointed if the players leave the campaign. It could be related to anything. Sometimes life happens, someone needs to work outside of the city and they are not, their schedule is not appropriate or adequate to play online. Um, perhaps someone just isn't, cannot get into the hobby anymore for whatever reason. Maybe that person enjoys some other activity. If you get into the idea that players will drop out of your campaign, you can, you can always replace them with other players. But if you get into that idea, you won't feel as tense or as disappointed when that actually happens. So instead of handling, a, handling it as a campaign, just communicate to your to your players that you want to play perhaps one or two sessions and if things go smoothly you can take it from there until perhaps completing an entire campaign a mega dungeon or if you are creating your own things or if you are just improvising things you can create those linked scenarios until whatever happens that ends the campaign prematurely or perhaps to its successful completion okay next point Mm, oh, this is very important. And I mentioned this in my video where I talked about my first RPG session. That was not exactly a positive experience, but it was still... It had a positive side effect, you could say. Well, I, I discovered my love for tabletop role-playing games despite uh, experiencing that terrible way of actually running a session. I'm going to put a link to that video in the description. In that campaign, you may remember that the dungeon master planned this story that the player characters were the descendants or the children of gods or something like that. So when you are planning a campaign, I would recommend, I would advise against using the player characters, the entire group, or even just one player character. Do not use the group or a single player character as the most important focus for the campaign. If your entire campaign is based on, oh, this group of characters or this single character is actually the, they are the chosen ones or he is the chosen one, or that character was the victim, uh, he got this thing stolen from him, or the group was attacked and they are seeking revenge, don't make that the focus of the campaign because unless you are playing things as a frustrated author, dictating 
everything in the campaign. Oh, now you're moving through this place and you're going to fight this combat encounter. Now you need to move to this other place and make these rolls to see if you perceive something or if you spot something. Oh, you didn't? Well, keep making those rolls and keep moving around the adventure site until you actually locate the thing that you need to know or that you need to obtain to move to this other part of the campaign. That's a terrible way of running the game, of course. It's um, pure railroading. Get on the railroad express, choo-choo, and <laughs> you start... The players are just there to, to act as passive spectators and to roll dice when you indicate them to roll dice. They have no agency. The true player authorship, and I actually don't like the way that that is used. They always want to mix tabletop role-playing games with writing a story. You are not writing anything. The story unfolds because of the interactions of the player characters with the game world. But the true way that the players are going to affect the story is through their actions, describing what their characters are going to do in the game world, who they are going to talk to, um, what they are going to attack, what they are going to explore. It's all about that. So when you say that the campaign happens because this character or this group of characters were the chosen ones or they got uh, robbed, they stole some, some something from the group or from a player character and now they need to recover that. Or maybe the characters were tricked. There are so many commercial modules that have... It, it's almost like a meme. They, they force the players, the group, to do something to get them into the campaign like a Gia's effect or spell, a suggestion, some mind control occurs, and they are now forced into the campaign. Now, this is... I wouldn't say that it's impossible to run a campaign like that, but it's troublesome. I, I think it requires an expert dungeon master or game master, because, like I said, unless you are dictating everything about the campaign, eventually the characters will throw a wrench into the entire thing. Perhaps one of the characters, the most important character, because like you are the chosen one, etc., that character dies. Or maybe the entire group dies. Or maybe the characters kill a very important non-player character, one who was supposed to be the main villain for the rest of the campaign. So death, mostly death, or irreversible changes, not necessarily related to death as well. It could be something else. Maybe an object that was important was destroyed or maybe relationships between the characters and non-player characters were cut off completely, or they became allies of the ones that were supposed to be the antagonists, all of that can throw a wrench into your plans. So you need to plan ahead for that if you actually want to play a campaign where the player characters are either like the most important people or the big teams. If they die, now you need to figure out a way to bring other player characters as the most important people. So maybe there is this prophecy. You are running a game for three player characters and the prophecy says the three warriors of light will vanquish evil or something and the warriors of light end up dying. You could say something like, but the prophecy was wrong. There were actually six warriors in total. And so you can create a new character arc where the new created characters, the newly created characters are introduced by perhaps a wise sage or a wizard that tells them, Oh, you need to act quickly. Uh, three of your... Uh, three people like you that were born under the star of who knows what. They were recently killed and only you remain to uh, restore balance or destroy this evil or whatever. And if you overuse that device too much, it's going to feel ridiculous. Unless you distort the idea completely, maybe these other chosen characters important characters, they also died. So now you need to create an, a new group of player characters and maybe you want to toss the prophecy aside. Maybe it's a campaign that shifts its focus, its focus towards we don't care about prophecies or omens, um, we have free will and we are going to ignore the prophecy, we are going to save the world even though we are not the chosen ones. So you need to think about those things. Similarly, when the characters are the victims, like I said, maybe something got stolen from them, or they are being mind-controlled, or they use the Gia's spell on them, and they are forced to do something. If they die, the new characters have no reason to keep going on that quest, because they didn't have... they were not robbed. 
they were not forced through some spell to do something. So you need to think about the reasons. Perhaps in the case of a spell that forces the original group to do something, maybe that spell is so powerful that it actually shifts to the family, the extended family of the original group. Maybe now you play as the brothers, sisters, the whatever, the sons, the daughters, and because they are now also affected by that curse. So now they are also forced into going through this quest. Or in the case like something was stolen, maybe the characters, the original victims, they create this order. Maybe um, a powerful weapon, a symbolic weapon was stolen from them. They had this sword that was used when fighting some very powerful threat. And this sword was stolen from them. And now they create this order with the specific purpose of retrieving that sword that is obviously in the hands or the possession of a villain or a criminal organization. So now, yes, you need to think about that, that you now have this order dedicated to recovering or finding the sword. So if the original members, the founding members of that order die, now you have this new group of player characters that are the, like, how would you say, the bench warmers, the, the uh, reinforcements that were waiting in the stronghold of the, the order. So it's all about that. Now let's move on to, to another point. In general, I would recommend, like I said, do not base the story of your campaign on having these important player characters, either as victims or um, as chosen ones. Just unless you want to challenge yourself with handling those situations, I would say that you are better off forgetting about that style of campaign. Okay. Do not think too far ahead when it comes to preparing for the campaign. Focus on the first adventure, perhaps uh, make a rough sketch of the second or third possible scenario and come up with some three unforeseen consequences. So maybe you create your first adventure and you say the characters are going to find this medallion that is connected to this group. And because of that, you could be planning that the second scenario, the second adventure, features the stronghold of that group, perhaps a, a cult or a religion or whatever. But what if the characters never find the medallion? Right? So now you, you need to adjust things. In that case, if you have already designed the cult stronghold and all of that, it's much better to think about some other events, some side quests that could get the characters back on track. Or perhaps the characters notice something even I would say, greater economy of movement. Instead of going to that stronghold, you could say that now the characters are going to identify this power source that the religion or the cult is using. So now the characters, instead of going to that monastery or base of the cult or religion, they go to this volcano where this source of energy that the cult is using to power their spells or whatever, they are employing that. So now it, it shifts the focus of the campaign entirely. Now, moving on to, to another thing. So it's all about not planning too far ahead. The players are going to throw a wrench on whatever you are trying to attempt. And if you want to plan ahead, make sure you have those countermeasures, those ramifications on how to handle things if the players are taking a completely different route. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's about it. I think those are my basic tips. I hope they are useful in uh, full metal state. Definitely, like I said, I think that the most important thing in, when it comes to running a campaign is not to plan too far ahead. If you are running an adventure module that you purchased, you know, one of those pre... Um, yes, the, a prepared module, your typical adventure book, read through it, read through all of the adventures, the scenarios, and think of the unexpected things that the characters are going to do to take things completely off rails and decide if there is a plausible way to get them back on track if it's beneficial for them or if they find a better way to solve the entire plot of the campaign, then you will have to make some modifications. Like I said, I hope this advice helps you and anyone who watches this video, I hope you benefit from these tips as well. Thank you for watching this video. I would love to hear your comments, uh, questions, your own advice on handling campaigns and preparing for campaigns. 
And thank you so much to those of you that are going the extra mile to support the channel. If anyone else wishes to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you. And see you later.